So welcome everybody to the Heidi Vaughan Fine Art Gallery and uh, welcome to our wonderful artist guest today, Mary Margaret Hansen. Thank you, Rochella. Thank you for the invitation You're to talk welcome. to your group and thank you all for joining us. We're very pleased to be able to do this tour of this particular show right now. So let us be on our way. Okay. I'd like to actually be able to have a full screen, Holly. Can I have a full screen? How can I see my full screen? Um, I'm seeing you full screen. Are you? Okay. Or is everybody else just shake your head? Yeah. Okay, you can see me full screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right, so. Um, I'm Mary Margaret. Who's that? I can't see you. Who said that? That was Kathy Lord. It's Kathy. Hi, Kathy. You're here. How lovely. <laughs> She's up north in Massachusetts. Oh, you're in yeah. Massachusetts? Well, I'm actually, of course you are. You're well, in Well, like today I'm in Connecticut. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to start. Where? <laughs> we're going to start our program, and um, Mary Margaret is going to talk a little bit for us uh, about, uh, well, tell me, what is a tableau? A tableau. Well, a tableau is the phonetic spelling of a tab low because all my life i have made assemblages and tableaus i think i made my first one in junior high when i emptied my mother's jewelry drawer and she had a little tile top table and i arranged all of her jewelry on this tile top table and a perfume bottle and an Indian scarf. And then I took a picture of it, a little black and white Kodak picture, which I still have. So I've been doing this for 70 years. It's how I do things. I love arrangements and assemblages. So a tableau is what I do, I think. So tell us a story of your daughter, Mary Lee. Well, my daughter came to live with me after college, after she graduated, because she wanted a few months to figure out what she was going to do next. And I had lived alone, and I had all my tableaus all over the house. And one day I bought two green pears, and I put them on a little green plate on the kitchen counter, and I came back an hour later, and they were moved. So I shoved them back where I had them before, and I came back, and they were moved again and I shoved them back where I thought they belonged. And she came out into the kitchen. She said, mom, I can't live with your tableaus anymore. And she got her own apartment and we all lived happily ever after. <laughs> so it can drive people nuts too, because I'm always kind of shifting my belongings. And um, there are a lot of family lore about a lot this. Of tableaus. Of mine. A lot yes. of tableaus. Yes. So what led you to create this exhibition? Well, Heidi Vaughn asked me to be part of her stable of artists about a year and a half ago. And then she said a year ago that she could give me a show, a one person show, and what would I like to do? And I said, what I would like to do, Heidi, is not just have things on the wall. I wanna have, I wanna have an installation. I love chandeliers. I love plates and dinnerware. I love chairs. So could we just turn the whole gallery into an assemblage, as it were. And she said, sure, let's do it. So here we are, and that's how it came about. And this is what you see all around here. And we're gonna take you piece by piece and tell you about it. What you see right here is about one year's work. So let's go and take a little walk and see the back wall. All right, and you are going to hold this iPad. Aren't yes, you? I am, so off you go. All right. Okay, now I can hardly see us because we're little. Can you see the back wall and me? Step yeah. back just a little. Okay, there are 10 photo collages on this back wall and each one is unique. And what I do is I take photographs with my iPhone every day. You have no idea how many tens of thousands I have up in the cloud because when I get up in the morning, it's kind of a morning meditation. I will go up on the rooftop or I will go for a walk and I'll take pictures as sort of a morning meditation. And so this, these are all assemblages and we're gonna start with, with this one. This one 
is a, um, a collage. They're all iPhone photographs of many disparate parts. And what I do is I start with a piece of Arches watercolor paper and I use either house paint or acrylic paint and I do a big swath of color all around. And then I start playing, and I usually work on two or three at one time, because you can move from one to the other and think about it and come back and either tear it all apart or and start over, or you think, this may be working. I'll give it a little more chance. So this is a disparate group of images, a lot of food, Neapolitan pastries, baskets of berries. This woman was in the Mexico City airport and she was looking at the departures and I was looking at her shoes and said oh I love those shoes and I took them the picture. Um, you remember what Susan Sontag said the the art critic and essayist and she said when you take a picture of somebody or something you own it and there is a proprietary sense by taking photographs you own a piece of it you can save it or salvage it so I think there's a lot of that going on here in this piece, when the kids were little, we used to go to New Braunfels and tube down the Comal River. And so this piece, let's hold it right in here, closer, are scenes of us tubing. Can you see it, folks? Of us on the river. Kathy, did you ever go up to the Comal and tube down? She can't hear. She's muted. She's muted. She couldn't respond. Yeah. So the water in the Comal is this color. And so this is just brings back memories to me of being um, in, in New Braunfels and how much fun it was to tube down the river. Now, I love the Gill Shop. I'm crazy about the Gill Shop. And it's kind of a guilty pleasure. <laughs> so everything in this collage I took a picture of it at the Gill Shop. Where is the Gill Shop? Oh, it's on Dunleavy, and it is the most wonderful resale shop. I just adore it, and, okay. and it's been a real hardship with this pandemic not to be able to go there. Yes. And, and for a few furtive moments now and again. <laughs> so this is a collage as an ode to the Gill Shop, and, and there's, a, there's a wine cooler here, a ceramic one, and it's a Bacchanal. There's a cup and saucer all taped together and words all the way around. And Mary words Martin. all the way around. And when I make a collage, what I do is I paste everything down or put it down with masking tape. And when I'm happy with it, then what I do is take a pencil and write all around the edge. And I don't know what I'm going to write until I write it. Oh, interesting. And whatever comes out is that's the way it is. And you kind of say, I have about six more inches left. How much more can I say? <laughs> and you just surround it with this, which is what I did. Now, this one down here, I grew up in Aruba. And that's off the coast of Venezuela. And you can back off just a little bit. Perfect. A little more. And these are paperweights. Oh, the trade right. winds blow in Aruba and everything blows off the desks all the time. Uh, so everybody had lots of paperweights. And I still have two from the 1950s. And I have them and I'm going to make a collage out of them. How beautiful. And then the, the words around the edge of this one, and I didn't write it until it was finished. It says, pondering the necessity of paperweights. Glass paperweights are indispensable and only God is perfect, she said. And then added, let them eat plums because oh. there's one red plum. How fabulous. So that's what this one is about. Lovely. Now, Heidi said I could do whatever I wanted here. So I said, well, can I put some chandeliers here? Now, this... And I found the lamp shop that was going out of business and they had chandeliers that had something wrong with them that not wrong to me. It presented a great opportunity. I love it when something is not quite right because then you can go in and fix it or embellish it. So this was a chandelier that I painted. It was sort of a pewter gray color and then I wrapped it in sari ribbons. Can you come around here and you can see uh, the sari ribbons. Oh yeah, beautiful. And I wrap, can you all see this? I hope yes. you can, at least nod your heads if you think you yes. can see it. And I love 
mailing labels. I adore them. So what I did was take 100, 150 mailing labels, and you can move kind of around and, and get closer, and I covered them with paint and photographs and rubber stamps, and, and, and we put this low so people can touch the chandelier and they can read what it says because they're little messages. Don't you love secret messages? And they're all on here. <laughs> this one says, in summertime, we love fresh figs, succulent, juicy. They are our favorite. And these are all little snippets of photographs that I've taken. If I could remember where in Italy I saw this ceiling, I would tell you. And it's a fresco on a ceiling. So it's, they're just words, you know. This, photo, this chandelier is called a lantern. And it was distressed glass. And what I did with that, can, can you see this? Yes. I had a roll of black and white film with photographs of this particular woman. And what I did was print them. And then I took them to copy.com and just made copies just on regular paper. And I put them all on the inside of this. And there's words written on it. So it's kind of a story or it's evocative or there's a lot of nostalgia in this, I think, in this particular piece. Mm -hmm. And this chandelier over here is a Venetian glass chandelier. And it had some broken missing pieces. And I went, oh, this is wonderful. It's beautiful. Because it was no longer $5,000. It was another price. And I could embellish it, which I did with spare parts. And I'm not, can you all see? I hope you can yes. see this. Yes, you can. Yes, they can. can. Yeah, they can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they can. And at the very end, I put round raspberry kind of light bulbs in it, which turned it into what I call a raspberry parfait or a confection. It truly does look like a old fashioned confection that you would get at a, a soda bar. Remember those? Yes. Yeah. So wonderful. I love the chandelier. Wonderful, I love it. wonderful. So let's just finish here this part. Oh, this is, yes. These are some silver plate bowls. Most of them probably from the gill shop. And I fill them with dried bits of flowers and clamshells. Can you see there are two, two clamshells in there? And this has, I love dried hibiscus. This is a very old hibiscus and one stone. And I thought that the colors really, why don't you dump it right here and you can see the colors look very much like the tarnished silver. How beautiful. So you don't have to polish these. Yeah. It's better if you don't. So, so let's sit down a moment and before we go on to some other part of the exhibition. Tell me about this over well, here. Well, Michelle, this is the wine cooler from the Gill Shop that I photographed. And then when I made the collage, I think, well, oh my dear, maybe I should go back and buy it. And it was on its last price. So oh. I was delighted. Oh, wonderful. And maybe when the show is over, we will drink this bottle of Oh, wine. fabulous. See? Fabulous. This is quite wonderful. Do you see these? Bacchanalian figures. I just love it. It is so bad, it's good. Well, before we sit down, can you tell me about these gorgeous chairs? Yes, I'd um, be delighted to. Pick up my, my I absolutely notes. Thank you. <laughs> pick up your notes. <laughs> these chairs are appliqued with fabrics that I salvaged from Hurricane Ike. You remember Hurricane Ike? Oh my God, in my yes. neighborhood? Yes. And in my neighborhood, there was an interior designer whose house flooded. Uh, and all her beautiful brocades and velvets and all were out by the side of the road. And I passed by and I said, oh, and she said, have at it. Uh -huh. So her loss was my gain. And I brought them home and put them through the washer and dryer many times and ruined my dryer with velvet <laughs> lint. Had to get a new one. But I have used these fabrics since Hurricane Ike, which is what? nine or 10 years yes, ago. Yes, it is. And these are from the hurricane. They're all distressed. They're a mess, but they're such a mess. To yeah, me, they're, they're beautiful. very beautiful. They are. And what I did was paint the chairs with acrylic paint, the fabric, and then I applied the fabric. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I love them. Let's have a seat. All right. Wouldn't you like a chair like this? I would. <laughs> beautiful.
Okay, where are we going now? Well, where are we going now? So, let's see. Um, tell us a little bit about you and your background. Well, I grew up in Aruba because my dad took a job with Standard Oil of New Jersey, which is Exxon, way back in the 50s. Yes. And there was a large oil refinery down there. It was the biggest one in the world when the Suez crisis was on. They pumped they got the, the oil from Lake Maracaibo and brought it over to Aruba. So that's where I grew up. And after, when I was a kid, all I ever wanted to do was write. And I wrote stories and personal essays and a play and, and, a, and a mystery novel, all when I was in middle school and high school. Really and, and, but at the same time, I never thought I would be a writer writer as a profession. I wanted to go into merchandise. I loved department stores. I loved them. I loved buying. I loved selling. And so after Cornell, I went to work at Bloomingdale's in New York City and their executive training program. And uh, <laughs> I had career goals, etc. but I also got married, which upended everything. <laughs> and we moved to Chicago and we were there a year and then we moved to Houston. And I thought, Houston? And I went to the Chicago Public Library. You remember those big red reader's guides to periodicals? Yes, you know, those big, yes, yes. yes. So I got all those out and I read everything I could about Houston. And I knew a lot about it when we arrived yes. for him to be interviewed with this job with Jerry Hines. Well, he got the job. <laughs> and I certainly knew more about Houston. <laughs> That I ever wanted to know. Uh -huh. It was like we were moving to Australia. What date was that? What year was that? 1967. Oh, wow. And we were moving from the from Chicago, uh -huh. and then before that, from the Upper East Side of New York. So it was like Australia. Did you have a family at that time? No. no. I gave up, and then I had three daughters. Oh. And I became president of the PTO and, and did all the things one is supposed to do, but always hungering for these things that I wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. And that takes us up to... Okay. Turning point in the 90s. turning point, which is in the 1980s. Yes. And there was the second wave of feminism, the civil rights movement, all this was happening. And, and half of my friends, we all were in the throes of divorce and change. And, and I was among that group of people. And Patsy Cravens and I at that time started doing photography and going to her farm up near Columbus. And we took hundreds of nude photographs of one another. Uh, we put the kids in school with carpool and then we would drive to the farm, take pictures and come back in time to pick the children up and feed them and do their homework. And we did this for several years. Yes. Well, we never showed these photographs until five years ago when we showed them at PhotoFest at Silver Street. And now the show is up at the Mac in Dallas on the walls. But of course, with the pandemic, very few people can see it. But it's, it's very interesting. 2020 is an interesting year. There's yes. a show in Dallas. There's a show here at Heidi Vaughn amidst all of this. So there's the wonderful and the terrible happening simultaneously, yes, Rochella. I know. So, so media relations and PR you were into as well? Well, after my divorce, I had to earn a living. Yes. So I worked for PhotoFest with Fred Baldwin and did all their media relations for a while. And then I started my own little business and I did an architectural firm and and Kuso Harley Davidson and, and I had a bunch of clients and I did that for a while. And then there was another pivot point. In 1993, I bought a house in Houston's East End and it was my home for 24 years. I love the East End. There is so much there, a largely Hispanic community, industrial heart of Houston, the port. And I became president of the Chamber of Commerce over there. Well, I, I'm not a chamber sort of person, right. but, <laughs> but I was president for five years. And then we started what's called a management district. Yes. And that is a state entity that your senator, your state senator has to approve. And Bob Urey in the downtown management district was the first management district. And there West Chase and Upper Kirby and Greenspoint, and we wanted one in the East End. So in the year 2000, we started that. And I was the president of that for seven years. And then when I was 65, they thought I was retiring, but I said, I'm not retiring. I'm leaving this job to do all the things like this show that I want to do because I said when I 
to be 80. I don't want to have huge regrets. I'm two years away from it. I have one more big thing I want to do before I'm 80. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I have two years. Okay. And what was so, that? Well, I'm writing a book. Okay. And more on that later. Yes. But then you had another pivot. You left that job to become an artist. I did. Yes. Full time. Full time. And a writer and an artist. Okay. And it's been a lovely, lovely, wonderful few years. Wonderful. I want to see these plates. I love these oh, plates. Oh, we forgot to talk about the plates. Let's go we? talk about the plates. All right. I love entertaining, eating, cooking. I love it all. So I wanted a wall of plates. And I wanted them to be about women. So these are photographs of, whoops. These are, let's try this one. These are photographs of the same woman who's in that chandelier, yes. same roll of film. Yes. And what I did was put objects on top of the black and white photographs and, and re-photograph them with my iPhone. And then I found a company in Canada who imports porcelain plates from Poland and they have gold bands around them. Oh, beautiful. And I sent them the artwork and they made this set of plates and it was a, a, an even dozen and then the pandemic hit. Yes. And it's called Masks Women Wear. Uh -huh. And we all play roles, you know, we all do, things that aren't our true selves right. and sometimes we try to erase ourselves can you see this is a yes. old used eraser yes and on the back it says censure so we often censure ourselves or hide or cover ourselves in some way so these are all the things that women do to hide parts of themselves or right. not and then the pandemic came along and they were printing these or firing them and i called them and i said could you do a plate with a blue mask because this is where we are yes. so this one says wear your mask <laughs> great. and um <laughs> that's great tell me about this beautiful one here well now this is the only one in which the woman it is you can see who she is wonderful and the name of this is sight uh-huh we can see her and she can see us wonderful, wonderful. so very um, good i'm liking these plates a lot and very they beautiful. feel good in your hands they're a heavy porcelain plate yes and I'm, I'm delighted with this yes. so very let good. me show you one more thing over here just because it's funny and it's kind of the way i live my life this is a bowl from the gill shop and it's your you've got your hand over the camera oh sure, really oh sorry yeah. darling put it hold it down a little bit mm. that works and it's filled with mussel shells i love mussels yes and what i said about this there's a little sign and i'm going to read you what the sign says these are the shells of the mussels i've eaten so far in 2020 there may be more as the year progresses and I will need a bigger bowl. Uh. So this is a little, another little tableau. Uh, my house is, I don't have the signage in my house, but I have things like this yes. in my house. So where are we going We're now? going now to this wall, which is just a fabulous wall. And you're going to tell us about these. Okay, now this is a quartet called Pages from the Book, and they're a little bit more autobiographical than the ones over here. As a, for instance, this one is called Baby Women. And I used to call my three daughters baby women when they were little girls. Lovely. And what this says is when we are baby women, how little we know what lies ahead. Yes. And there's a wedding gown upended here. And these little girls are like iconic little girls. They're trying to break free. They're trying to create havoc. Yes. And, 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 and but we don't know what lies ahead. Right. This is a picture Patsy took of me that was in our gal, uh, Dallas show. Yes. And but I'm shielded with a shirt, a blouse. Uh -huh. So it's another kind of mask. It's another kind of thing that women do to themselves or have done to them. Yes. And as baby women, we have to find our way. Wonderful. Always finding our way. Wonderful. This one is called 
contemplating the chrysalis. You know how butterflies are chrysalis before they fly? Yes. Well, this is a picture of a woman who is entrapped in some sort of garment that could be called a chrysalis metaphorically. Yes. And here's another woman contemplating the chrysalis and will she break free or will she not? We don't know yet. Yes. She Wonderful. has a choice. Yes. So these are autobiographical in the sense, but they're also universal because I think as women, we all face these decisions right, right through our life. Right. And we make them or we don't make them. Right. Uh, this is autobiographical. This is a painting one of my children made in nursery school. That is a Christmas tree. Oh, how beautiful. And, and, and there I am taking a photograph up at the farm. <laughs> so, so these are, are four that are about my life. Your life? Your life? Yes, everybody's life. Everybody's life. Yes, how so, fabulous. Yes. Now over here, is a duo. I went to Naples with Earl twice and I fell in love with Naples. Can you see these? Yes. This is, it's a duo. You may have to stand on the other side of the counter, Rochelle, okay. to get the bow. All right. Let's see. Can you get back far enough so we can see the bow? I think I can. No, you're going to have to stand on the other side of the okay. counter. Okay. Just to get back far enough. Okay. I think. We'll right. do that. Let's try it. Uh huh. Now, let me look at the screen and see where we are. Y'all are very patient. Oh, perfect. We can see them both. All right. So these are my favorite places and things in Naples because it's a city with very frenetic energy. It feels just crazed. There's graffiti everywhere. But at the same time, there's all this Baroque and Rococo art in the churches and museums. And I went nuts and the pastries are divine. <laughs> so I took all my favorite things, the graffiti, the rococo parts of it, the pastries, the prosciutto and mozzarella, and I put them all in this piece. And and these two pieces, and they relate to each other. And I covered them with gold and white and with writing, writing everywhere to kind of be like the graffiti that is on every single thing. If you zoom in on this, let's see if we can see this photograph. Yeah, I'm sure you can. Okay, there. This was on a little street in Naples and the children were being carpooled and they were getting out and they were opening this gate and look at this Baroque demon here. Oh, they wonderful. live behind there. Yes. Look what a mess it is and how wonderful it is. I love the city. And what about this one? These are, this is from Capodimonte, the museum on the top of the hill. Uh -huh. And this is that same little street about 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Can you see? Yes. And they're so narrow and the Vespas are coming and going and the cars and the people. I love the energy. Yes. So this wonderful. was my souvenir of Naples. Beautiful. And they kind of complement one another. Now these pieces here are small pieces and they each tell a story and this one on the bottom has a picture of my mother and i'm going to read you what it says this is from an old photograph of my mother and this again can you see it yes you can okay and this says my mother had a dog named Sheck. as a child of the great depression she had two dresses only homemade hand-me-downs and she was still the most beautiful so again i didn't write this until i had created it and then painted it and glued it down and i thought what shall i say and this is what we said wonderful and i do a lot of photographs of food and women's bosoms and Baroque things, because I think it's all really about women and nurturing and what we do. And this particular one, if you can see it says, we were absolutely sure about this. Women, mothers and daughters nurture. Why would we not place their images side by side with food? Sustenance is what we are after here. Absolutely. So and these is, are small, intimate little pieces that could go under a desk or in some sort of private little space because they're kind of quiet pieces. Beautiful. With messages. Beautiful. So 
Very what else good. do we have to say? Well, we're going to the sit down. The salon wall. Yes. <laughs> we're going to talk about the salon wall. All right. All right. So okay. here we go. This was a fun wall. I told Heidi I wanted to cover an entire wall with stuff, and I did. Now this lovely little chest of drawers, can you put it down slightly? Yes, I just wanted a big picture. It was bright yellow and it was at the gill shop. You have to back up to okay. see the whole thing. Yeah, a I little bit did. more. I just did. There, now we can see it. Okay. Okay. And I had it stripped and it had these triangles underneath, which I loved. And so this formed the basis of the wall. On the top of it is an assemblage of items that kind of looks like my house and why my daughter Mary left and yes. moved to her own apartment lo these many years ago because I collect and I assemble and rearrange constantly. And so this is kind of the way I live. And then the whole wall is covered with one of a kind pieces and what they are are photographs on which I have put objects, re-photographed, reprinted, as a for instance, do you see this little, this is a little Chinese, um, I'm trying to, there, it's a little Chinese saucer and there's a dead flower in it. It's still kind of soft and weird. Yes. And it is actually in this oh, how beautiful. print. I just laid it on a black and white silver gelatin print, photographed it, added another collage piece, and printed it. And so there's references here to things in this room. Yes. Uh, Wonderful. Sometimes I will go to Galveston and, and get seashells and they're broken shells but still beautiful mm -hmm. and what I do is surround some photographs with shells take a photograph of it this one has acrylic paint all around the edges beautiful tell me about these with just the frame and not and, well and then it the just piece itself. seemed that that was a beautiful bouquet of flowers can you all see that bouquet yeah I'm sure they can my, my. let me see what it looks like yes and, and I love the flowers, they're about a year old. God forbid I should throw them out. So I put them in, the, in this frame. I think they're lovely. And you've got two of them and, in this and one. And here's another little object that I love. Oh, it's I, beautiful. It's just a piece I picked up. The real piece is on the other side. It's a photograph, a vintage photograph, but I thought the back side was far more interesting. Uh, interesting. So I never turn it around to the real piece. I love the way you put it in on the wall and then frame it with a uh -huh. frame, just like this one over here. And that is a Gill Shop feather mirror that I added leaves. There was this beautiful tree with falling leaves on it in Seattle when I visited my sister and I brought these leaves home because they had these little black spots on them that looked like India ink. Uh -huh. And I thought, ooh, I could do something with those. Uh -huh. So they're kind of like a counterpoint or punctuation marks on this feather mirror. And then I thought, it needs a frame. Yes. So I put it inside a frame and all of a sudden I think it works. Wonderful. So, so Mary Margaret, I want you to talk about this piece over here because I think this is um, really um, iconic for you. Well, it is because I love to eat. And I think in this pandemic time when we're having to stay at home and we can't go out to our favorite restaurants and we can't eat it out anymore. So I made this and you know the cookbook, The Joy of Cooking? Yes. So I wrote The Joy of Cooking and I crossed that out and I put The Joy of Eating Out. And then it says lots of mussels and Mexico and Thai thrown in, not to miss. And then there is barbecue and how we long to go out again. Yes. And this is, the, those are those mussels at Epicure. Can you see yes. them? This is at Good Company Barbecue where, you know, uh -huh. you pull your cold beer or drink out uh -huh. of them. This is Weights and Measures. This is El Rey up on Washington Avenue. Those wonderful Cuban tacos yes. they have there. Uh, this is Rome, Vongole in Rome. Uh -huh. This is in Seattle. So wow. these are some of my favorite things to eat and places I loved. And I think we all miss going out and eating out with friends. It's friends, it's food, it's what we love. 
and and it's kind of a sad time in a way because yes. we're we don't get to do those things that we want to anymore that's true so this is kind of a, a tribute or a souvenir of times past and we hope they're coming again so i am delighted to have shown you this show it was a pleasure to create it. It's a pleasure to show it off. And I would like to introduce you to Heidi Vaughn, who Thank runs you so this much. place. It is so good to all of Heidi, us. Heidi, can you come join us? <laughs> Thank you, Mary She's Margaret. She's a wonderful person. So this is Heidi Vaughn, who owns, <laughs> owns this, the, this uh, <laughs> gallery and has been around how long for Heidi? Uh, two and a half years. Uh huh. Two and a half years. Long enough, we just had our 300 sale. Oh, wonderful. On Saturday. Yeah. So if people wanted to come and see the show or others? The show is up through Saturday at 5. Yes. So you can make it. And is that by appointment? Um, it's best by appointment, just to avoid any disappointment. Yes. Um, uh, we're open from 11 to 6. On Saturday, we're open from 11 to 5. Very good. Thank you so much for hosting us. Yeah, thank you very thank much. You. Should we tell them how to make an appointment? Yes, tell them. Uh, call or text me 832-875-6477. Thank you so thank much, you. Heidi. Thank you. Thank you so Mary time. Catherine, Mary and Margaret, can we sit down yes. for a moment and um, just wrap this up because we're going to ask people to come and uh, what is there? Where are we? I think she oh, she's one moved. of your she guests. Is, right. Right. Okay, so I can see us here. Yeah, so we are. So, um, 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 Holly, if you would like to um, ask anybody who'd like to ask questions of Mary Margaret, she's willing and able and certainly ready to answer questions. Okay, so if you have a question, all you have to do is uh, wave your hand. I have, um, a, okay, let me see, Joyce. Joyce, let yes. me. Yes, I think I, I unmuted myself, yes. I believe. Okay, good. Yes. Because I was wondering um, where, uh, if y'all have a history together, if the two of you have a history together, if you've done shows together or events, and so how did it come about that you knew about this and wanted to, to uh, present it, uh, share it with us. We do have a history. <laughs> we go way back <laughs> as two women who have had many different kinds of careers as artist, as public servant, as volunteer, and it just keeps going on and on. And right. so when Rochella asked me if I would talk about this, I said, yes, why not? Because I, I knew that Mary Margaret had this show up and I wanted to see it. I wanted to come to the opening, but didn't want to be amongst a lot of people. So I came um, by myself. In fact, Joanne and Michael came, Butera. Uh, I brought them over here and Mary Margaret was here and showed us the whole show. And then I got the idea. And so Joanne and I talked about it and that's how we, how this came about. Mm. <laughs> well, you did a good job. Right. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Yeah, any other questions? Uh, uh, Mary Margaret. Hey, Kathy. I have, I waved. Mary Margaret. I'm here. Hi, I remember your show at Irma's. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Do you remember your show at Irma's? I do. And, and I know Rochella has your Clorox bottle chandelier. Yeah. Oh, we didn't right? talk about that. Right, right. Well, uh, it, that was a whole yeah. installation of warehouse <laughs> and it was dinner tables again and plates and chandeliers. That's right. So one of the uh, chandeliers in that place were 85 or 90 filigreed Clorox bottles strung together huge. with living tablecloths. Huge, huge <laughs> and then it chandelier. Had one of those mirrored balls in the oh, middle that yes. went round and round so it went through the filigree and the played with the light it was fabulous yes. we have in the east end we had a clorox bottling plant one of eight in the country and i went to the manager of the plant yes. of armor yeah. drop and i said i would like clorox bottles to make a chandelier and he gave me a hundred <laughs> empty never been used and he gave me five thousand dollars to do it and i I tried to fill a green one and it was so devilish that I called a friend who teaches art appreciation at Houston Community College and I said, 
can your students, I'll come in and talk about art and appreciation, et cetera, whatever you want me to talk about. And we're gonna give them each a Clorox bottle, an X-Acto knife, and a box cutter and see what they do. Well, I was over there in those classes for three weeks and some of them were really good. And so that show, like all things, is a collaborative effort. You never do something all by yourself, ever. It doesn't happen that way. The more people you involve, the better the outcome. The more influences and the more creativity it comes out. It is wonderful. So thank you for bringing that show up because that was such a fun show. So the next story is, yes. it was, I said to her, one of and the And Margaret. Yes. So, so the, the, I was going to just up. remind Mary Margaret, I still have my damask, remember my napkins, my damask napkins that were did part you, of that show? Did you give them, did, did you volunteer Lemons. them to the show? Yeah. <laughs> did you give them or, or did you want them back? Yes. And then Mary Margaret, very nice. She's oh, you up. gave them back to me and you had them cleaned. Uh -huh. I did. So the follow-up story to me? the chandelier. The mm -hmm. follow-up story to the chandelier is I went up to Mar Mary Margaret and said, I'm building a house. One of these days will you will you um help me with the chandelier? And she said, sure. I think it was two or three years later. Yeah. So I went to her and, and she came and looked at the plans and designed using the very same concept. And that was a chandelier in my other house before I moved to Park Lane. And when I moved, I didn't want to leave it behind. And of course, can't hang a chandelier in my It's pocket. 10 feet tall. <laughs> so I took it back to the person who did the construction and made it into a standing light sculpture. So it's in my apartment, the chandelier on the, and, the, and the Clorox bottles. So I'll send you a picture to all of you, but you're certainly welcome to come see it. <laughs> Great. So any other questions? I see fabulous. Ruthie. So Ruthie, you can unmute yourself. Okay, I think. Ruthie. No, Ruthie is not unmuted. Okay, am I unmuted? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Rochelle, you should, uh, a suggestion is that you take pictures, I know you have them, of the chandelier in your home. And I think it's now a standing lamp, right? Right. And show, show the two. Because okay. Mary, Mary Margaret, I have to tell you, it was, outstanding in her home it was absolutely outstanding thank you i love doing it it was such fun yes, it oh was. my god <laughs> and i love what you did with it now rochella and thank you and that you didn't have to get rid of it no i couldn't no way i could not go part with that oh my god <laughs> no i love it any other questions yes and it's it's Ann Norwood, Mary oh, Hi, Ann. How are you? Oh, I'm just thrilled to see this, and I'm sorry I'm not in Houston to to, to come in and see it personally. But I I've always loved your energy, and you're just constantly come creative. And I've watched you for many years, and it, you're always so much fun, and you're very alive, and it, your enthusiasm radiates and thank you and I'm so glad to see this show and glad to see you. Well you know Anne do you remember the two brides that I took pictures of in your beautiful place on North Boulevard with those yes. big archways? Mm -hmm. Well Jenny Black was one of them and she was here Saturday to see the show and oh. bought a piece and so oh. you know it, it and I and she said she loved her wedding pictures it was the most beautiful place she'd ever seen and it was in your back garden so <laughs> what comes around goes around okay. and around again and again isn't that something it's wonderful I just saw her Saturday um, you know what that's Margaret, called, tell about tell about your show of purses because that was so fun and different. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was fun. That had a long history and it had a website, but that website is defunct, unfortunately, because I built it before and, and it, it never, it couldn't withstand all the changes of 20 years. 
but I did a whole show on women's purses oh. because we keep our secrets in purses. And you know how men never want to look in purses, but little children will. But men will say, <laughs> uh-uh, they won't like some special vessel. So I collected stories. I asked women, what about your purse or your grandmother? Tell me a story about a purse that meant something to you. And I collected several hundred. Then I put them on a website with the photograph of the woman's purse and her story. Yeah. And then I, I did a talk for, it was a sorority that wanted a talk on purses. And it was at the River Oaks Country Club. And I prepared this whole slideshow about the whole history of purses and vessels and how in the last decades, these conglomerates are selling Gucci and Prada mm -hmm and Dior for thousands of dollars and it's become the must have bag, but we should not let these entities take the mystery and magic of our purses away. It's ours and we finish the talk. Do you remember Helen, was it Helen Reddy, the Australian woman? Um, and she yeah. sang, I am woman, hear me roar. Yes. <laughs> yes. So at the end of the talk, there's three or 400 women in this ballroom. And I said, don't let them take your purse away from you. Yeah. And then, then we played, I am woman, here oh, we that's roar. Great. It was lovely. Oh, what it was so satisfying. <laughs> so that's my story. Thanks, Anne, for bringing that up. New story. Uh, another story. Another story. We live by stories, don't yeah. you think? Sure. Stories keep us going, don't yeah. you think? Absolutely. I do. All life is a story. Any other questions? So we'll thank you all for being here today. And thank you so much, Mary Margaret. We had thank fun. Thank you. It yes. was lovely. Thank you all for the opportunity to do this. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.